The reinvention of zombie lore as a modern myth began when the first reel of George A. Romero's seminal classic Night of the Living Dead burned its searing imagery into the collective retina of its 1968 American audiences. No one had seen anything like it before. It was raw, brutal, divisive, incendiary, and legend has it that Romero had his zombie extras consume animal flesh for added realism. Its grit-filled black and white and heavily contrasted images lent the production a documentary feel and those same audiences spilled out onto the neon-lit sidewalks disturbed, rattled and exhilarated. A new film artist had arrived on the scene and with him a sense that film had taken a new direction, leaving the quaint wooliness of former horrors no longer relevant in a world that was dealing with Vietnam and race riots. Romero was about to lead a whole new army of renegade horror directors into the sunlight and shadows, amongst them Toby Hooper, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Wes Craven, Last House on the Left. Night for Me is still one of the most atmospheric and disturbing films ever made. Anyone who has seen it will be unable to filter from the mind and eye the horrific sequence that saw a child take trowel to mother amidst ear-splitting shrieks of surprise, dread, and horror. It is powerful stuff and of course, who can forget its nihilistically bleak ending that sees our black hero cut down by white redneck sharpshooters. Romero was young and political and fearless. I first saw this classic film as a young boy when the BBC ran its seasonal Saturday night double bills of horror, usually in the summer months, how magnanimous when you consider that we were all allowed to stay up longer when the forbidding thoughts of school were well out of the psyche. The double bill was usually a Universal Studios creature feature, followed by a colourful hammer from the 50s or 60s or 70s if we were very lucky. But this particular night, the colour was replaced by the stark contrast of Romero's black and white imagery. I was stunned by night and it left an indelible impression that a scene may include a scene due to its now public domain status, playing on a TV set of several of my own films. I have always thanked Mr. Romero in the closing credits. He brought a cinema verite bloom to the film, which didn't allow us hide behind what former films had proffered, a safe grand guignol canvas that clearly wasn't real. Night was too real, in the best possible sense. He was Ken Loach directing horror if the BBC would allow him shoot in real locations. He was a testing ground for other artists to follow him and create their own genre-busting ideas. He was at the vanguard of a new wave of horror film directors during a period that saw the likes of Scorsese and Cassavetes carve their own radical niches in gangster lore and social realism. Romero was a social realist horror film director, if that is allowed. He was an innovator, a maverick, a great filmmaker.